So hello and welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. So it's going to be a, a short video for, for real, <laughs> for real this time. Um, one thing that I've seen crop up quite a bit recently on various forums on the internet uh, about DCC is, well, we've got various uh, methods and means of using uh, a, a, an 8-pin plug in a 21-pin chassis if we want. Uh, and I've certainly done some videos uh, on, on creating adapters for that and you can buy custom, uh, sorry, stock adapters for that too. But one of the things that uh, doesn't seem to be covered much and there's not any obvious adapters, not that I've seen anyway online to buy, is a, an adapter uh, or a mechanism that will allow you to use a 21-pin ship in an 8-pin um, locomotive or chassis. Now I've scratched my head and tried to work out why that is because it's certainly totally doable, it's not actually very hard at all really um, and, and I can only imagine that there's perhaps just not the, the same demand uh, out there to, to use a 21 pin chip in an 8 pin chassis um, or something along those lines. At the end of the day you do sacrifice a little bit of functionality because some of the functions that break out through the 8 pin chip um, don't have anywhere to go in an eight in, in a twenty one pin chip. Don't have anywhere to go in a, an eight pin chassis. But anyway, um, I'm going to do a quick a quick how to any on how to use or how to create an adapter to allow you to use a twenty one pin chip uh, in an eight pin chassis. So I've got just a, a simple Lock Pilot standard twenty one pin chip here, um, and I'll, I'll use this just to give everything a wee test run towards the end. Um, but the the main thing that you need is one of these little breakout adapters. Now, I think these are called um, MTC 21 pin breakout adapters. Um, and all it is, is the, the 21 pin uh, plug, which is the part that's in the 21 pin chassis and some little solder tabs so you can break them out. And the second thing you need is an eight pin chip uh, or um, wiring loom. Um, you can either buy them. I think some companies like uh, Lace or LIAS, DCC sell them via eBay and uh, AliExpress and other ones. Uh, or in this case, I cut this off uh, an old Hornby chip that I've hardwired into an old Lima Loco. So you need something like this and uh, you need a breakout adapter. Depending how um, how you want to arrange it in the loco, you may also want a selection of very fine decoder wire so you can extend these wires. Uh, but for the purposes of uh, my uh, use for this, this uh, fairly short length is absolutely all I need. So it's a fairly straightforward process, as I say. Um, to aid, aid us in this little tutorial, I've done a, a breakout and wiring diagram which shows the solder tabs and color coordinates them um, with the with the wires on the wee eight pin loom there, and I've also done um, just a, a kind of uh, accompanying twenty one pin breakout explanation there. One thing just to mention is that um, on this particular MTC breakout adapter, um, the the pins are numbered very slightly different to how the twenty one pin. Uh, pins are often numbered uh, and that's because um, on this particular one um, number 11 um, isn't numbered. Number 11 is the blank pin position but on a lot of the other diagrams number 11 is the blank pin is number 11 uh, so everything else that follows it is different but anyway as long as you stick with the numbering which is on this diagram you really can't go wrong. So we're going to follow this diagram anyway, strip back the wires, solder them onto this and that's literally job done. Okay, so I should have said there that uh, I will make a copy of that diagram available via the website in the links below if anybody wants to download it and use it. Um, the other thing that we need anyway just to get started with is a set of wire strippers. So all I'm going to do here anyway is to strip back just a little bit, um, you know, about two or three mil um, off, the, off each wire so that that's all ready to be tinned and soldered. So I'm just going to progress along here anyway just stripping off the wire and once I've done all that, I'll come back and we'll move on to the soldering bit. Okay, so I've stripped everything back. I'm just going to apply a little bit of flux. It's not absolutely necessary, particularly if you use flux core solder, um, but I find it just helps everything to flow really nicely and uh, generally makes sure that you, you get a good, a good solder joint first time every time. So um, I've got my soldering iron here all, all heated up. I'm just going to wet the tip slightly with a little bit of solder. Uh, and all I'm going to do is tin all of these wires by just touching the iron against it and dabbing a wee bit of solder on um, and, uh, and away we go. Okay, so I've pre-tinned everything. One thing just to mention, whenever you're uh, 
tinning these really thin little wires is. You normally lose a little bit extra uh, insulation just because the heat uh, shrinks it back or burns it back. So what I like to do now anyway is just to go down and just half these so that uh, we don't have more wire showing than we need. And that just means that it's reducing any potential for shorting out when we solder them onto that particular adapter. Okay, so that's the 8-pin plug and harness all set up and ready to go. Uh, and I'm just going to apply a little bit of flux to the solder tabs on the actual adapter itself. Um, and uh, just a quick run, that's all it needs. Uh, and I'm going to tin this as well, just like I did with the wires. Okay, so I'm going to tin all of the solder pads um, just in case I decide to um, use this in future for things like adding speakers on and I'll, I'll come to that um, just at the end of the end of the video um, but you could get away with just just um, applying solder to the tabs that you're you're going to use um, and nothing more but anyway as I say I'm just going to quickly dab a bit of solder just onto all of these tabs there we go you don't need much solder and you don't need to keep the iron on for very long at all so I'll just crack on and finish this and then we'll come back to soldering on the wires. Okay, so that's all the, the tabs um, pre-soldered or tinned, I should say, and all ready to go. What I'm going to do now is just to arrange the, the wires uh, in the order that uh, I, I want them to be on the uh, breakout board, just to keep everything a little bit tidier. It's not always entirely possible to get these all in exactly the right order because things crisscross. Um, but I, I like to try my best and keep it as neat as I possibly can. So I'll continue to order these and we'll come back when we're ready to get the soldering done. Okay, so that's the wires just uh, roughly arranged there. Um, so I'm just going to crack on with soldering. The first one that I'm going to do is right up at the very top here. Um, and that is pin 21 and that is the, the track feed red. So we'll just get that into position there. And I think I'll, uh, I'll just quickly take a, a little dab of uh, fresh solder. Uh, just to make sure everything is clean and good to go. Um, and the, the main thing to remember on this is just to keep the heat on for as short a time as possible, otherwise you'll end up uh, losing more uh, insulation from the, from the wires than you want. So we'll just heat up the solder first on the tab. There we go, that's one in place. So I'm going to continue all the way down, so the next one will be black. Uh, then orange, then grey, then blue, then green, uh, violet if we had it. Sometimes um, the uh, say that the Hornby chips have a wee violet auxiliary wire popping off the side and then we'll do the yellow and white on the back. So I'll progress down here anyway and uh, we'll come back just towards the end. Okay, so we've just got uh, just this final white one to go now. Um, it is quite fiddly soldering all of this and I do recommend that you, you use a soldering iron with a, a little fine point tip as well. Um, I think if you if you don't have one of them, it would be really pretty tricky to do this without uh, messing it up a little bit. Um, but we have just about finished anyway, and I'll just get this final one in place. There we go. Excellent. Brilliant. Uh, so that's them all in place anyway. Uh, and the main thing just to watch out is if you do hold the heat on too long, the insulation may run back a wee bit, and that might mean that the bare wire is uh, you know, possibly going to touch one of the other pads. So just be, do be careful. Um, if you do hold the heat on for too long and the insulation does run back, just take it up, nip a little bit of the wire off the end, uh, and then try again. Um, you know, It doesn't matter if you don't get it first time, we don't always do that. One or two of these where second time goes for sure. But uh, anyway, so we've got that done now. What I'm going to do is um, now I'll get a little bit of Kapton tape and I'm just going to wind that around here partly to insulate the solder tabs that we have uh, we've soldered and also on the rear there are solder tabs too which you could use if you wanted and we want to cover those up just to make sure that they don't short on anything. So I'll get the captain tape out and we'll give it a few wraps. Okay, captain tape, a little bit cut off, probably a little bit more than I need actually but uh, not to worry. So I'm just going to make sure that nothing is shorting or touching. I have uh, used my um, continuity tester just to make sure that everything is as it should be and it is so everything is lined up there uh, and all I'm going to do now is just get the capped on tape and lie it down there. The other reason why this is, is good to do is um, if you are laying down the 21 pin chip on top of this 
uh, then sometimes there's components like the capacitors and so on which will stand, stand a bit proud of the PCB and again might, might touch on some of these solder tabs. The other thing just while I'm doing this to mention actually is that uh, again with some decoders, some of the sound decoders, um, you're actually better at soldering these wires on underneath on the reverse, so using these solder pads. Uh, and that's because when you, um, when you put this chip on top of it, uh, sometimes the components will sit very close to these tabs, sometimes it'll be too close. So do uh, line it up before you decide which side of the, the pads to use just to make sure that you're, you've got the clearance you need. But anyway, that's them um, all done now and we're pretty much good to go. Uh, one thing that I do sometimes do when I do this, and I've forgotten to do it today, is to put a small bit of heat shrink on before I've soldered everything and then shrink it down and it makes it all neat. Um, that's a nice wee touch and I forgot to do it, but you can also get the same effect with a little bit of insulation tape or a wee wrap of captain tape or something like that. Okay, and there we have it. We've got uh, our 21 pin uh, breakout board, the wee harness and the 8 pin plug. And all that we need to do to, to use this uh, is to get our 21 pin chip and to fit it on top like this. Um, now, as I say, this one, the Lock Pilot Standard, is a pretty slimline chip. We press that down there, it all sits comfortably, the capped on tape makes sure there's not any shorting, uh, and there we have a 28, sorry, 28, an 8 pin version uh, of this 21 pin uh, chip. Now, the one thing to mention is that some of the functions that uh, are on this chip, because it's 21, they can't be brought through to the 8 pin chassis, so if you want to use those, um, you can use the, the details on the uh, the uh, wiring sheet that I've put together there um, and you could tap in an extra wire onto a solder tab and have that going off to do cab lights or um, you know like separate running lights or something like that, daytime running lights, whatever you might want to do. Uh, but if you just want to basically simply get it going this will do the job. Now the one thing to mention um, if you have a, a lock sound or a Zemo sound decoder um, the the two speaker connections, plus and minus, will come off this, but they're not going to go into this pin, uh, the 8 pin plug, because there isn't any pin spare for them to go. So what you would need to do is either solder on wires directly to the additional tabs that you normally get on the lock sound or Zemo sound decoders, or you can solder on another two wires onto the two tabs, either on the bottom or on the top side there, and have those going to the speaker or speakers, depending how you wired it up. And again, um, I have noted on this wiring diagram the, the two tabs that you would need to solder to if you wanted to, to break out to the speakers. But um, we're not doing that because it's a lock pilot. So uh, that's pretty much where this video ends. Um, I was going to stick it on the test track, but really we all know what an 8-pin chip does <laughs> when it's in a loco, so I don't need to test it. Um, I have used these before, so I know the wiring is absolutely fine and it'll work fine. So there you have it, a fairly quick, fairly simple and pretty cheap way uh, to use a 21-pin chip if you've got one in an 8-pin chassis, if that's what's needing a chip. So if you've got any comments or questions about what I've done here in this video, please feel to leave them uh, in the comment section below or you could drop me an email via the website if you want as well. Um, if you've liked this video, please feel free to get a thumbs up. If you're here for the first time or you're, you're a return visitor but you've not yet subscribed, please do consider hitting that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with everything that's going on at Strathpeffer Junction. But all that remains to be said for now anyway is thank you very much for watching and cheerio for now. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.